Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm Mario Rosero. I have the great pleasure of being the Senior Vice President of Education at the John F. Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., where alongside our work to honor President Kennedy every day through the performing arts, we also champion arts education for students across the country. So we're here today to talk about one of our favorite programs, Turnaround Arts, which really partners with schools across the country to bring more arts to more kids. Uh, in the discussion today, we have one of our great turnaround artists, Alfred Woodard's joining us. We have two local students, which we're gonna hear way more about in a second, as well as our national program director. So I think we're ready to jump into our conversation. So I was hoping, Kathy, that you would start us off. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and um, give us some context for the turnaround arts program. Okay, hi everybody. We've had a great day in New York City. I recognize some of you guys that were doing The Lion King at PS 284. Let's have a round of applause for those guys. That's gonna be a great show. So my name is Kathy Fletcher. I get to be the national director of the most amazing program, Turnaround Arts. Hi, Nora. Uh, Turnaround Arts started about nine years ago when the President's Committee uh, on the Arts and the Humanities under President Mrs. Obama um, it's, a, it's an advisory council to the White House on cultural issues and made up of a bunch of amazing people who had been doing work in arts and education for a long, long time. People like Alfre Woodard over there, Chuck Close, Yo-Yo Ma, um, just a bunch of amazing people. And there was a lot of talk about school reform, right? There were a lot of schools around the country that weren't really getting the right resources. They had great teachers students who worked really hard, but it just something was not working. And at that time, nine years ago, there really wasn't a lot of talk around the arts as something that could be used as part of a strategy to bring success into schools. Now, I know that you guys know, because we have so many turnaround arts students in the audience, how much the arts help with teamwork, right? When you're doing a school musical or doing a mural, or if you're part of the choir, you have to learn about teamwork. Um, the arts are inherently joyful, right? And don't we want that for all of our children? It's like makes everything a lot more fun. Um, you, there's a lot of things that the arts will teach you if you're learning English, you know, if you have special needs. It's just a wonderful way to deepen education and to reach and teach students. So this President's Committee thought, what if we go into some of these schools that are having a hard time succeeding and bring in a really robust standard space and integrated arts education program? What if we bring in musical instruments and art supplies and tons of professional development and build a national cohort that has really high expectations, a lot of love, a lot of connection, and let's see what we can do. Well, we had a really robust evaluation through Booz Allen Hamilton in the University of Chicago, and after two years, three years of doing this in some of the schools that have been really struggling, we found that attendance was going way up kids weren't getting in trouble as much. And I think you're gonna talk a little bit about that. <laughs> um, teachers were collaborating, families were happy, families were coming into schools and math and science scores started climbing. So we know that the arts are really, really, not just something beautiful to have once you get success in your school, but something that can be a really fun and engaging way to bring success into your school. Thank you. So we were so fortunate to bring on Turnaround Arts as one of the Kennedy Center programs as of December of last year. And this is really added to a complement of programs that serves DC locally, but also every state across the entire country. And what we always talk about is that um, the issues and challenges and arts education and education, you know, we've been chipping away at bringing more arts to more kids for years. So we sta really stand on the shoulders and the foundation of many folks' work in, in getting us to this place in time. And one of the unique things that Turnaround Arts really does is brings all these things into one school, into one place. So how do we really capitalize on all the powers that the arts have to really change and transform a school? Can I say one more you thing? Sure can. As icing on the cake of a lot of really hard work by a lot of really smart people, each one of our schools has been adopted by a high profile, amazing professional uh, like Alfre Woodard. I think Alfre adopted like seven schools though. But most of our artists uh, in New York, we have Misty Copeland and Mark Anthony. Um, 
Sarah Jessica Parker is one of our artists, and they come into our school communities, and they stay, and they do master workshops, and they talk about their own experiences, and it's really been a magical part of our program. Thanks, Kathy. So, Alfre, we would love to hear, so, you know, as an artist going into one of your schools, what, how do you see your role, and then what kind of impact do you think that your role has on the students in the school community? Um, one of the things I, I want to add to an introduction of why we do what we do is there is all the data, all the science that says when a person is involved in artistic activity, parts of their brain open up that make them susceptible to, to comprehending mathematical concepts, retaining information. And so it is fun, it is joyful, but it's real and it's serious. And that's something we've never been able to get the people who hold the purse strings to understand that it's not a luxury, it's not playtime. It is what, first of all, finishes a human being the ability to express yourselves creati creatively and to do it connected with other human beings. That's what civilization is. So it's essential that we have arts to have a complete and viable uh, education. We think every American young person deserves that, not just kids who happen to live in a zip code that they can have that access. So that's, that's one of the reasons we do it, because it's, it's a human right. OK, so. <laughs> The reason that I, I don't even know what you asked me now, but the you're reason, you're on a roll. you know, you're on a road. just go with the it. Reason, go with it. And I'm scared to start naming the artists. Y'all go online and look at them. But some of your favorite people are turnaround artists. Uh, here, let's go a little bit. Chad, Chad, Chad. Smith. Uh, uh, Trombone Shorty. Trombone Shorty, Paula Abdul. Dave Matthews. Dave Matthews, Chuck Close. Josh Groban. Horace Whitaker. Okay, I shouldn't have started. Kerry Washington, <laughs> go online. There's, Jason Mraz. Oh my God, there's, how, there's about 30 of us. There's 70 now, 70 Alfred. of us, oh my we God. We started a trend. Once we started that pilot of eight schools, it was so successful. Some of our schools went from F, being rated F, to being rated C, to being rated B. So it, it, it is something that, that is a, turning, a, a tool to turn around schools that are struggling, and it happens very fast because, like I said, it's, it's, it's not only artistic, it's scientific. So the reason that we all show up, people like, like me, is that somebody showed up for us, you know? And it doesn't matter. <laughs> what we want to do is say, say we show up as much as I can you know, if I'm fortunate, I'm working a lot, but as, as much as I can, I'll show up in a year to the schools I've committed to. Maybe I'm somewhere else where I'll show up to, to uh, just Sarah Jessica's school because I'm in that city. So we all trade off. It's like a, a big family. But the thing that makes it work is Turnaround Arts places professional arts, professional arts teachers in the schools that are there for the students nonstop every day. So it's not, we're not doing the magic. We're just, we're showing up just so that the lights come around and we can go, hey, look at them, they're fabulous. Get the resources down here. So that's how we function. But we show up because somebody was there for us. And I don't, I don't even care if it was one person who owned the bakery, you know, when we were in third grade, came into our school and they looked at us and they said, I'm gonna tell you something. I expect great things from you. So let, you know, know that I'm here. This is how I did it. This is how I built my business. It's important for all of us. You guys have to mentor each other as well because then there won't be enough adults sometimes where you are to, to help you stand up. So don't dash another young person's dreams. If they say, you know what I really want to do? I want to be on that Mars, that first colony of Mars. Don't everybody start hollering, laughing, bending over. You, you try to figure out, OK, come on, how are we going to do that? John, what, what have you done last week that's going to help you get towards that? But it is, it is communities lifting you guys up. All of us showing up, we just happen to be in front of the camera. But that's why we are where we are, not as successful people, but as adults who have the consciousness to know that they have to keep coming back. Absolutely. So, you know, we always think in the arts that it's 
so valuable to have role models to look to to see that I, I can become that person. Here's someone who resonates with me that I might see myself one day trying to achieve. And so I think both that mentorship and sort of the lightning rod of attention that you're able to bring to arts education in these schools is just so critical. So I thought maybe we'd hear from our students that are joining us today. Um, I had the pleasure of being at PS 284, Gregory Jackson School, shout out. Um, <laughs> this morning for a real whirlwind tour, but we got to see every nook and cranny of that school, even the, my favorite space is the, the visual art room, which is my background for my history, but we got to see students uh, rehearsing and sharing their work, and we, we were welcomed to a kindergarten class that just brought us into this circle of peace and, and uh, warmth, and we felt so included. But, John, we're so glad you're joining us. So, John Negron is a seventh grader right now, currently, at that yep. school. Um, and so I wonder if you might tell us a little bit about your story and how Turnaround Arts has played a role in your life. Um, just to start off, uh, excuse the pun, but Turnaround Arts literally managed to turn around my life and my habits and the way I always acted. Um, as she hinted on, I wasn't always a good kid. I wasn't always a nicest. Um, when, I, when I was back in elementary school, I was sort of a troublemaker. And I wasn't a good fighter either, but that didn't stop me from getting into fights. <laughs> and um, I was basically that one kid that none of the teachers liked. They always just, all right, get out of my class, do your work, you're gone. And that was when they actually taught us. Because there was a lot of mass preps, and it was, I, I feel I just didn't have the chance to really do anything but learn. And then when I came to um, 284, it, my first year there in fifth grade, Turn Around Arts hasn't impacted us yet. We were still, uh, we were still Lou Wallens, and it was, even then, there was just so much opportunities, more for me than my old one. And then sixth grade came along, Turn Around, Turn Around Arts came along, and the opportunities were just times five. Just so much more came, and it gave me the, the door to go into my now career acting. And it uh, gave me the opportunity to join a theater company called Developing Artists. And... That right there completely just changed everything for me. I was, uh, I was seen as one of the most respectful, nicest kids, and I was more of a people person, and I was just more outgoing because of that change that Turn On Arts would offer me. That's really awesome, and, and a powerful story, right? Um, and so, a great actor, because we say, saw him this morning. We had the great good fortune of seeing you uh, rehearse. Uh, you want to tell us a little bit about your current role at school? Um, so right now, my school's doing a production of The Lion King, and I managed to get my hands on the role Scar. <laughs> so He crushes. And you're doing an excellent job, if I might add. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we love hearing these unique stories because the arts touches us all in different ways. So Hermanice, thank you for joining us. Hermanice St. Paul is a student. Oh. St. Remy. St. Remy, excuse me. Thank you for the correction. Uh, names are important. So from East Flatbush Community Research School. Yes. So, um, and we give a shout out to your school. So thank you also for joining us. Um, and I wonder if you might tell us about how Turnaround Arts and a very special program um, played a role in your life. Um, the turn Turnaround Arts program had played a role in my life because last year I remember being this child like where I used to get in trouble a lot. But when the Turnaround Arts program started last year, um, during 2015 to the school year of 2016, I used to... Um, pay more attention in class and get more interested in what was going around in my surroundings. And nowadays, like during this year, I got in less trouble, even though I'm still struggling with that. I'm still improving each day. That's great. And so I also understand that you're an avid reader. Well, yes. So there was a program, right? Um, Tell me the name, the Tickets for Success? Tickets to Success. Yes, and so um, that helped contribute to you reading even more than you already did? Yes. Yeah, any novels or books that you really got pulled into? Um, one story that I got pulled into was um, We Beat the Streets. Um, that was my favorite book because it talks about um, three um, men growing up um, in New York, New Jersey, and they had uh, faced many struggles, um, 
based on their race because they were black and people didn't believe that they would make it to college because they never because they were black that's one and second they never knew anyone who went to college and they used to get in trouble with the police a lot but um due to hard work uh, they had made it and thankful thank god they had graduated um and they became doctors right wow, wow. Yeah. so i mean the, you know, we know the arts, they touch us all in different ways. And I think when it inspires us personally and it can change us as a person, as you guys just told us about. Um, Kathy? I just want to give a big, huge shout out to AOL because they have been an amazing partner to turn around our arts in many ways. But they are the ones who ran this um, movie phone partnership that in East Flatbush that you were a part of. And I think a lot of kids ended up winning tickets to take their whole families to the movies, right? Yes. So let's hear it for AOL and movie phone. <laughs> Alfrey? No, I just wanted to say something. I'm laughing because... Both of you have said, oh, I wasn't a good student. Oh, I was a troublemaker. <laughs> but you know what? A lot of times, adults and the people who are over us mistake our energy and our curiosity for being a troublemaker. You know, it's boring if people don't challenge you. And that's one of the things that the arts does, is it helps to focus young minds. And especially if you are an artist, it's hard enough being a grown artist. People don't, they think you got the worms or something else. <laughs> when you're a young artist, you don't even know it yourself. So I just want to tell, tell you guys that you, you know, yes, you might cut up and do that, but there's no such thing as a bad student, as an impossible uh, young person and all of that. The people around you need to help you focus that energy. And we're not, these, these ones are fabulous, they're smart. And I want you to, to give me a job eventually one day. But <laughs> we're not trying to breed artists by the Turnaround Arts program. People will tell you that they are pilots, they are doctors, they are researchers, they are teachers. They're in all kinds of capacities now because of some artistic thing that happened in their school, making clay figures, making, you know, uh, Paper mache atoms makes you think about space. So it's about just opening up your mind and giving you confidence. And that's what exposure to the arts does. It helps you define yourself as a human being so that you know you've got abilities and you're not what other people want to write the script for you to say. Exactly, couldn't say it better. So um, I wonder um, if uh, Hermanis, John, or Kathy, if any of the three of you might talk us through what a typical day in your school might look like with this program in it. Uh, um, so a typical day with this program in my school would be during like one whole period of class. Every student in the class are reading something that they're interested in, that they picked out, and they, they're not causing no trouble. They're not making the teachers talk unless they have a question. and they're well behaved and throughout that process, um, well, you could basically say they're interested and engaged in what they're reading. Absolutely, and the arts have such a tremendous power to do that, right? Yes. Really getting you hooked, getting you engaged and get, almost getting lost in that world of either art making or reading or literature, it's so easy. You know, one of the things that we witnessed today in one of the classrooms was signing the contract and AOL partners with us to make sure that every one of our schools around the country gets Focus 5, which is a really shifting the behavior management from the teacher to the students. And it's a small shift, but it's a powerful shift to go in and see students like signing a contract that says they're gonna be focused and collaborate and uh, concentrate and be part of a community. And it's really shifted the culture and climate of all of our schools so that kids can get busy learning. And a, uh, a typical day in my school in the classes, um, I've noticed a lot more art has been put into it. In math class, we've done some um, normal math problems, division, multiplication, but using shapes, squares, triangles, and um, there was a lot of dancers in my grade. And I've noticed in the middle of class, they would be doing the work, but they would stop and they would practice the stepping routine real quick, and it wouldn't be out there where it would take away the attention. They would still be doing the work, but you could see them doing the hand movements and the gestures, and it's... Making, usually people would think it would take their attention away, but 
but I've noticed that it doesn't. It keeps their attention on the work while at the same time they get to practice their craft and it, it keeps their mind open. So. Exactly. I actually learned some of that step routine this morning. <laughs> I promise I'm not going to perform it, but um, the amount of concentration and focus that the seventh grade steppers that we saw had was really amazing and such a treat. So, um, Alfred, I'm just curious, how has this program affected you individually? Because you've given a lot to your schools and to the communities, and I just wonder how it gives back to you. It has increased my focus and my commitment. It's made me a better artist uh, because I've gotten the spirit of what it means to be at the beginning, to keep your mind open, because your minds are much more open than people who are in their you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth decade. And so being around young people and, and watching them, I get back to uh, how to approach any, any, uh, any uh, challenge I have as an artist. So it's an, it, is, it has helped my artistry, first of all, and it's helped me as a human being because we, uh, like I said, we're not really alive unless we're creating community. And it gives me a community to be in wherever I am in the country. And just for the record, no one has passed their second decade on this stage. <laughs> just to be clear, we are all no, young I and fresh. I have earned my decades, babe. <laughs> so I thought we might open it up to the audience and to the floor for questions. I think we have one right here. Hi. How are Thanks you? for joining us. Yes, my name is Chanel. Um, Alfred Witter, I'm just so proud of you because you have a collage of work, and I wanted to know if you would ever consider writing a book. Uh, no, I would not. <laughs> <laughs> my, you know, my husband's a writer. He's a brilliant writer. I love writers. Reading for me is a luxury. When you say, ooh, what are you gonna do? To be able to sit with a book because I never get a, enough time. So I respect writing too much to try to do it. Thank you so much. Another question. Hey guys. Um, Hello. I'm just wondering like, um, like what can we do like on our part to support like these type of programs? That is a great question. Kathy, you might take this one? Sure, and who, where are you from? Can you tell us who you are? And are you with? Oh, no, I'm not a student or anything. I'm just, uh, you know, I just work around the city. So one of the great things when we went from being a pilot program of eight schools across the country, we built local programs. And we now have partnerships with New York and Bridgeport. And we went from eight schools to 75 schools in 14 states. And if you live in New York, a great thing to do would be to connect with Alexa Fairchild, who is the brilliant Turnaround Arts Program Director of Turnaround Arts New York. And there's an endless amount of things that, you know, people in the community do, such as book drives or building gardens or tutoring kids. Um, so you should talk to Alexa and she can give you some information. Mario's also going to give you a website that everyone can go to to see what you can learn about national turnaround. Yeah, for anyone Canada's. who's interested in giving uh, or supporting or finding out more at a national level and even the local sites, you can go to KennedyCenter.org and you can find out all about turnaround arts as well as our other national programs. But it's a way to say, you know, do I want to make a difference in my community? Do I want to support this? And it has all the details there. So thank, thank you Thank you so for much. asking that. And also, wherever you are in the country, it's very important that you keep lobbying, emailing, showing up, calling your state reps and the national reps to let them know how vital you think arts education is to a complete education and thereby our, our future and our national security when you think about it. Every time I hear a, um, a sad or tough story about arts in schools, I always, I force myself to counter it with an arts positive story. So I say, that may or may not be the case, but here's a great story that's happening in this school. Because I think people also need that inspiration. Yeah. So we have, I think, maybe just a couple minutes for one more question. Anybody? Yes. Yes, hi. I've got a question for Hermanese and for John. If you had to meet with a principal who was thinking about doing a turnaround art program, very quickly, what would you tell them that you think would convince them the most? Great question. question. Um, I would basically start off with the pun I made in the beginning. It will turn around lives of some of your students. Because uh, honestly, I feel when I was a kid, I wasn't very open with my teachers. And I'm sure there are students who aren't, who they don't tell the teachers what's going on at home, what's going on outside, what they're going through. And turnaround arts could be a way, and arts in general could really help them cope with that without having to be telling everyone, I'm going to this, that, and the third. And the arts can help them. 
And for me, I would say that um, the Turnaround Arts Program is a way to get your students more involved in the school. And I, well, I guess you could say that um, you, with the Turnaround Program, they get to express themselves more than you, they usually do. Thank you. So, <laughs> we hope that this was, this uh, sort of whetted your appetites for what Turnaround Arts at the Kennedy Center across the country can really do for schools and for communities. So we thank our audience everywhere for joining us, but please join me in a thunderous round of applause for our panelists today. Yeah.